This video is going to take you through some worked examples of how to draw ionic dot and cross diagrams. Before you watch this, if you haven't already, I'd recommend you watch the video about electron structure. You've got to understand how electrons fill atoms to understand bonding. And then the video about how ionic bonding happens, why it happens. And in that video, I did the first example of a dot and cross diagram for an ionic compound, which was this one here, sodium chloride. So I'm going to take you through a couple of other examples for ionic compounds. For ionic compounds, they always consist of metal and non-metal atoms. The metal atoms have made positive ions and the non-metal atoms have made uh, negative anions. And for the dot and cross diagrams, you are showing the two separate ions. It's really important to remember that because there's also something called a covalent dot and cross diagram. That's totally different. But if you are looking at a compound that's got metals and non-metals, it's got to show two separate ions. This is the method I'm going to follow. So first thing we'll do for each of the three examples is work out how many electrons we're going to draw for the metal and the non-metal. We're going to draw them out and the metal is going to have crosses for electrons and the non-metal is going to have dots. Then we're going to put on square brackets the charge and we're going to show how many of each. So we'll do three examples. The first one I'm going to do is going to be lithium fluoride. I did a video about how you can uh, balance charges to work out the formula of these different compounds. So if you want to look into that, then you can. I'm just going to give you the formula and we'll work out the dot and cross diagram. So lithium fluoride is LIF, just one of each type of ion. So how many electrons to draw? Lithium here is in group one, so it's going to lose one electron to become one plus. Started with three electrons, it's going to have just two, have that full out of shell. Um, fluorine in group seven, so it's going to gain one electron, so it's going to have now ten electrons, two and then eight. So that's what I'm going to draw. Lithium, as it's a metal, I'm going to draw it with crosses for electrons. You could do it the other way around, but I always do the metal with crosses just so I don't get confused. So those, it's two. It had one more, which is it has lost. And then the fluoride originally had nine, which I'm going to draw with dots. Those are the ones it originally had, but it's going to have gained one electron from the lithium. So I'm going to show that last electron as a cross. I put them in square brackets to show that they are ions, they're charged particles. And I show the charge. The charge is based on how many electrons it's lost or gained. I've made a separate video about how you can use the periodic table to just very quickly show you what charge a different ion will have, but it corresponds to the group number. Lithium's in group one, so it lost one electron, so it's got a charge of one plus. And I don't have to write the one, I just write plus, and that means one plus. Fluorine is group 7, so a fluoride ion has got a charge of 1 minus, because it's just gained 1 electron, which I'll just show as minus. That is my finished dot and cross diagram for lithium fluoride, because it's only one of each ion in the formula. Okay, next example I'm going to do is sodium oxide. Sodium oxide has got a formula of Na2O. Okay, same process. Sodium, again, is in group 1, so it's going to lose 1 electron, so it'll just have 10 electrons now. And oxygen, group 6, so it's going to have gained 2 electrons, it's going to have a charge of 2 minus, so it'll have 8 plus 2, it'll have 10 electrons. Okay, let's draw those out, starting with sodium, which I'm going to draw with crosses, because it's the metal. So 2 in the first one, then to take it up to the 10 it's got this full outer shell of eight electrons. And that's it, because it lost the extra one. And then the oxide ion, the first two electrons there. And then I draw the ones it originally had with dots. That was what it had originally, but it's gained an extra two to get its full outer shell. So I show the ones that it's gained with crosses. Okay, square brackets to show that they're charged.
and the charge based on how many electrons it's lost or gained. Sodium lost the one electron, so it's just going to be plus oxygen. It gained two electrons to be the oxide two minus ion. So you do a plus there and a two minus there. Now, last thing I'm going to do is show you how many of each. For it to be balanced, there are these one plus electron, uh, one plus ions, but two minus ions. So for it to be balanced in terms of charge, we need two of these to balance out one of those. And that's what the formula shows, Na2O. Now, there's two ways I could do that. The better way would be to just draw another sodium ion there. And now I'm showing the two sodium ions and the one oxide ion. Just to make it quicker um, for now, I'm just going to put big two there in front of the sodium ion so that we know there's two of those. And I'm going to do the last example, which is aluminium oxide. Again, we could work out the formula ourselves by balancing the ions, but I'm just going to give us the formula. It's Al2O3. Okay, aluminium then. In group three, so it's going to lose three electrons to get its full outer shell. Originally had 13, so it's going to have 10. Oxide, we've just done. It's going to gain the two electrons to have 10 electrons also. Let's do aluminium first then. The first two, remember it's the metals, so I'm showing it with crosses. And then the next eight go in the next shell. And that is its full outer shell. I'm not going to show the last three because it's lost those three to get its full outer shell. Oxide, just like the last time, it's going to have its original eight, two in the first shell, and then six in the next shell. And then to take it up to the full outer shell, to the full 10 electrons, the last two, I'm going to show its crosses. Okay, square brackets to show that they're charged. Charges, aluminium lost three electrons. So it's going to be three plus. The oxide, it gained two electrons, so it's going to be two minus. This is a slightly more complex one to balance out because three plus and two minus doesn't balance. The way it would balance is if we had three of these, taking it to a total charge of six minus, three times two, and two of these, taking it to a total charge of six plus. And that's what our formula tells us, two aluminium ions, and three oxide ions. So again, the really long, but the best way of doing that would be to draw two aluminium ions and then three oxide ions. And we'd see that there'd been six electrons lost from the aluminium atoms and six electrons gained by the oxygen atoms. To make it quicker, I'm just gonna put a big two in front of my aluminium ion and a big three in front of my oxide ion. There you go. Those are three worked examples to show you how to draw dot and cross diagrams.